What if I told you that you could give your children or grandchildren a financial head start that could make them millionaires? And this is without breaking the bank. Here's the thing. Most parents and grandparents don't even know how easy this can be. You see, one of the best things that has happened to my family is actually the birth of our boys. It's a beautiful experience and watching them grow, you just want what's best for them. And just like other boys, they can be cheeky and annoying at times, but overall, we want what's best for them. We want to make sure that our kids don't struggle the same way that we did as parents. And I'm sure that that's the same for you too. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can start investing for your children or grandchildren so that they won't go through the kind of struggles that you went through. Whether you have a little or you have a lot to invest, it doesn't matter at all because it won't cost you a lot but the secret actually lies in starting now. I am also going to share what I'm doing for my own kids and spoiler alert, it's not a junior ISA. So let's get right into it. I promise that it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg to give your kids a leg up. You see what I did there, right? Leg up. But why is that possible at all? What is the one thing that can turn even a small contribution into massive fortune? The answer is compound interest. And Uncle Albert calls it the eighth wonder of the world. Let's drive this home with it an example. Let's imagine that you invest just 30 pounds a month from the time your child is born until they turn 18. They could have 19,000 pounds waiting for them. And if they continue until 30, the money would grow to 75,000. Now imagine your child at 30, not a young chap anymore, but with a 75,000 pounds nest egg, just from investing 30 pounds every month. How different would their life be? But if you decide to actually continue investing the same 30 pounds monthly, at age 60, they will have 1.8 million pounds. Even if they don't contribute another dime from 30, the 75,000 nest egg will still grow to 1.7 million pounds just because of compounding. That's why investing for your kids is a very powerful concept because unlike me and you that will feel the pain of waiting for some time or the need to invest larger amounts of money in a very short time to have that kind of funds, your kids have decades to achieve this. Look at this again. Even if your kid at 18 says, Dad, I don't want to add any more dime to that investment and they don't withdraw from it, they just let it cook, right? At 60, they will still get 1.5 million pounds. Now also imagine this is invested in a junior stocks and shares, which is the main tax efficient way to invest for your kids in the UK. That means that they won't have to pay a single tax from the 1.5 million. And by the way, the maximum amount at the time of shooting this video that you can contribute to a junior ISA is actually 9,000 pounds per year per child. And you can share the account with friends and family to contribute into the account for events like birthdays, holidays, and the likes. The best thing about the junior ISA limit is that it is also separate from your own personal ISA allowance of 20,000 pounds in a year. Another idea, is actually to max the 9,000 pounds limit during the first year of birth of your child, if you have the funds of course, and not add a single dime. Do you know that 18 years, the young man or lady would have 59,000 pounds and at 30, he would have 207,000 pounds. And if he doesn't touch it until 60, he would have 4.7 million pounds. Below, I've linked a compound interest calculator that you can play around with the amounts that you can afford, even as low as 10 pounds, it is something. There are numerous providers that actually provide this account and I've popped one on the screen. You can just pause, take a picture or just simply Google Junior ISA comparison account and you would find numerous links that would compare the fees with different accounts because that's something that you want to be mindful of if you've listened to me any of my investing videos you know fees are very important you want to watch out for fees so they don't erode all the gains that the accounts should build up over time but there is a downside to the junior ISA that you need to be aware of and that is control 
So what happens if your child gains full control of that money at 18 years? Ideally, we want to ensure that the money that we are giving to our kids is going to continue to be invested correctly and ultimately spent wisely. And while we are encouraged to teach our kids about money, and I did a video showing us five ways that the world did teach their kids to be better at managing money, just to help us with that. While that is good, we still don't know that they will do the right thing. I believe it will be naive of us to say that our cute little boys will be savvy with money even if we do everything right. And that is the problem with the junior ISA that element of control. And just to recap the pros and cons of the junior ISA. The advantages are they are tax advantage accounts so your investment grow tax free. They are very simple to open and run and they are also low cost most of the time. And the cons are that you can't use the money till they are 18 and even after 18 the child gets full control. So if you need to do things like to pay for the child's school fees before they turn 18, it's practically impossible. And after 18, the child could blow the money to pay their ride. <laughs> The other option which only became possible as a result of the new ISA rules is to open a separate ISA for yourself and save for them in that account separate from your regular ISA account assuming you have one. So in this scenario you would have two ISA accounts and you will actually be contributing different amounts to both. While this wouldn't have been possible a year ago, it is one of the good things that the last story government did to revolutionize the ISA products. So personally, I can have three stocks and shares ISA accounts in my name, even though two of them are technically for my kids. And between myself and my wife, we can contribute a total of £40,000 in a year. That's a lot of money. In fact, unless you have maxed out your own personal ISA and your pensions, which is about 60,000, I don't see the need for a junior ISA because of these rules. But if you want another option, we have the junior SIP. This is a longer term account and specifically for retirement. It's a pension account basically for your kids. With this account, you have control over the investments and the account until the child actually reaches 18 and then it is transferred to the child or may I say young adults. And just like your private pension, the money in a junior SIP cannot be assessed until age 55 which is right actually rising to 57 in 2028. Most parents actually don't like junior SIP from the interactions that I've had because just like ordinary pension, the child won't have access to the money until they are retirement age and most people would rather see their children benefit from all of this contribution before retirement or maybe just have the flexibility and the option to even retire earlier you know you have access to a pot of cash. The last option to invest for your kid is the junior investment account of Bear Trust. This is not very popular but it's also an option. This is just an investment account in the name of your kid or any kid for that matter but you have full control of that account till you hand it over to the beneficiary. There is no contribution limit with this account but it doesn't have any tax advantages like the junior ISA or the junior SIP. Also, anyone can also open this account with the kid as a beneficiary. So that means that your rich uncle, your rich auntie can actually open this account for your kid and they would keep contributing and monitor their own contribution. So this is something you can tell your rich aunties and uncles. So what's my strategy? As a parent, I know it's natural to want to put money aside for your kids. And while there are numerous options like I've discussed here, the reality is for many parents, especially immigrants, including myself, it doesn't make sense. Instead, I'm focused on building my own financial strength with the aim of supporting my boys from the place of strength in the future. When you're on the plane, the attendant would say, put on your own oxygen mask before that of your kid. It is for the same reason. So if my child needs XYZ amount in the future, I will actually support them from my own account. I believe instead you should focus on building and cultivating the right mindsets for your kids to be wealthy. That's why I did this video first. The change is actually first internal 
before external and every year the number of self-made millionaires is actually increasing it's never been easier in the history of the world for people to be rich and wealthy and the odds will keep getting better and better as our kid grows again you can watch this video to see how you can set up your kids mentally this is more powerful than giving them a pot of cash without any sense and then they lose it to the kids with financial sense but let's say for example they now have sound money management and in the future they need help from your isa and your pension you can support them maybe support a business idea support them with deposit for their house and you're very confident that the money won't be wasted but for my grandkids it will be a different story i would most likely give them a lump sum just like the example i gave right maybe max out their isa at that time from the place of strength and just let that ride and grow as much as it wants but this is just me right and what i plan to do as a to, to a day but here is the big takeaway you don't need to be a millionaire to give your children or grandchildren a millionaire's future by starting early using tax advantage accounts and letting compound interest do the heavy lifting you can actually transform small meaningless contributions into life-changing amounts but much more than money it's about giving them a future where they are financially independent and secure with options to pursue their dreams so back to you what would you do to secure your child or your grandchild's financial future let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like 